Threats of violence are flooding New Mexico yeah. schools, and you can see so many cities on that map there that have been affected in recent days from the Four Corners to the Metro to southern New Mexico. So what is behind this disturbing pattern? Today, our Kasha Gorchik sat down with a clinical psychologist to get an expert's take on what's driving this behavior in kids and teens, and more importantly, what we can do to help stop the dangerous cycle. She joins us live from Albuquerque. Hi, Kasha. Tessa, Steve, these situations range from on-campus threats to social media threats to even just learning students had guns in their car, like right here at Albuquerque High School earlier this week. But today we work to learn the thoughts behind these kinds of actions and, more importantly, what we can do as adults to help. Clovis, Aztec, Parkland, Florida. Whether near or far, last week or last summer, you hear those city names and your mind likely goes one place to the shootings that took place there. So as much as this is a crisis right now, it's also an opportunity. It's an opportunity for us to help teenagers learn about how to process and manage these issues. Whether in a library or a school, these recent acts all involve teens or young adults who were not only struggling, but also got their hands on deadly weapons. If they have access to guns, they pose a dramatic risk to themselves and other people. A kid, a, a teenager that has access to a firearm is at 10 times the risk of suicide than any other teenager. A reality psychologist, Dr. David Lay, says is actually much more likely than turning the gun on others. You know, social isolation, you know, mental health issues, drug and alcohol issues, access to guns or firearms, that is a whole lot of kids. Most of the kids that have those risk factors won't engage in these kinds of behaviors. But it doesn't mean those kids don't need help. The absolute best thing you can do for a, a troubled teen is to sit down and have a conversation with them. Dr. Lay says do not be afraid to bring up tough topics like suicide or violent thoughts. But the reality is if you are thinking that you need to ask that, Chances are pretty good that thought is already in your teen's head. Asking these questions in a non judgmental, non threatening, kind of non shaming way is the way that we get to help teenagers get support dealing with these issues. Law enforcement and schools have no option but to take every threat seriously. Many turn out to be pranks, which Dr. Lay says is also a cry for help. We as humans use humor to relieve anxiety. And so when a kid is, you know, joking about this stuff, they're telling us, I'm nervous about this, this hurts, I don't know what to do with this. And Dr. Lay says another key to helping any struggling youth is getting them proper treatment. There are a number of resources out there, but an easy place to start is the state-funded crisis hotline. We have that number posted at KOB.com right now under four links. Reporting live in Northeast Albuquerque, Kasha Grigorczyk, KOB Eyewitness News 4. Kasha, thank you. Many schools hold active shooter drills, but today in Washington, President Trump argued those exercises are bad for children. I mean, if I'm a child and I'm 10 years old and they say, we're going to have an active shooter drill, I say, what's that? Well, people may come in and shoot you. I think that's a very negative thing to be talking about, to be honest with you. The president says he'd prefer to focus on making schools a less desirable threat, and he floated the idea of allowing trained teachers to carry concealed weapons.